Awesome. Welcome to week three of our midweek session, season one, baby, season one. Um, it's been really, really awesome for us to kind of go through some of the foundational, um, some of the foundational things that really uphold us and really um, ground us and root us. And I really believe will revolutionize the way that we that we walk. And so one of our key focuses have been discipleship, discipleship 101. Um, and we've been looking at what it means to be a disciple. And then through that, the conversation has evolved into um, new creation reality. So us as new creations through our rebirth. So through our faith in Christ Jesus, what has that, what do we now possess? So um, through our faith in Christ Jesus, his death, burial and resurrection, right? We make the confession that we believe that Jesus is Lord. Um, through that, we are birthed um, and we are new creations, right? We spoke about this, we unpacked this last week. And so through us being new creations, there are certain things that we now possess, that we now inherit as a, um, as a result of our faith in Jesus, right? Everyone check in. And so today I ain't going to do the recap. Y'all are going to do the recap today <laughs> because we've been doing um, it for the last three weeks and we've been recapping quite a while. And so um, the first question is, what is a disciple? What is a disciple? Everyone, anyone, anyone can answer that. What is a disciple? Um, a disciple is just a follower. Um, he's a follower of, of a teacher. So Jesus had disciples, so did John. I think so did Paul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's so good. Anyone else? What is a disciple? It's really good, Damona. Thank you. What is a disciple? What are some of the things that we, we unpacked concerning being a disciple? Yeah, uh, we spoke to it being, or discipleship being like a way of life, mm. and like disciple being someone who follows Christ, who lives and tries to express uh, Christ likeness in their everyday life. Mm. And I think that we spoke to stuff like being under authority, being able to serve other people's missions, being able to kind of just submit yourself under another is mm. what, like, there's no like isolated disciple. Like, it's always in relation to someone else above them or over them. Mm, mm, I love that. I love how you describe that. Yeah, exactly. So discipleship is, um, we looked at the Greek meaning, um, meaning student, pupil, or follower of another, and we are followers of Jesus Christ. We are called to follow him, um, to basically um, emulate him in all that we do, right? Christ-like characteristics to come into our everyday life so Christ like characteristics are not restricted to what we do on a Sunday no this is a way of life like some of you have said it's a way it's a way of life right and I gave um the example of you know in Jewish um custom um discipleship would be emulated where one would um basically leave what they're doing and follow a rabbi and be with him in 24 seven with everything that he's doing. Like they will go everywhere with this rabbi, right? That was the custom. Like if you were a disciple, you would leave what you're doing and you would follow this rabbi, not only follow his teachings, but his way of life. And so um, in relation to that and us and Jesus, we are called to, um, to release what was before and to come into this life of following Christ wholeheartedly day to day and that um, is expressed in everything that we do when we're at work I gave the example you know where sometimes I'll take stationery at work you know and 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 the Lord was like that's not really honest you know <laughs> like that's not right or in my relationships you know 
if I had fallen out with a friend in the way that I dealt with that relationship, um, was it in light of Christ? Um, how I conduct myself in terms of how I relate with my husband, is it in light of Christ as me being a true follower of Jesus Christ, right? Everyone, everyone got that, right? So, um, discipleship carries that connotation of discipline, hardness, obedience, and submission, as some of you have said. Tamu said, anyone who does what Jesus says, Ariel said, to be led by the Lord and our lives governed by him. Exactly. So we looked at those attributes, and you guys can watch the replay if you missed it, but we looked at the attributes of a disciple of a disciple and what their daily life looks like and one of the number one things was being in his word daily and we we kind of looked at the different things and so you can always watch the replay to kind of look over that all right cool next one who is the new creation who is the new creation who is the new creation come on y'all I know y'all have got your, your notes and all that. Who is the new creation? Let me see who's actually here because... <laughs> who is it, Damola, who is the new creation? Um, I mean, it's us, right? It's It's anyone who... Uh, accepts Jesus, anyone who's, who's confessed with their mouth and believed in their heart that Jesus is Lord is a mm -hmm. new creation. Yeah, correct, correct. Who That is the new creation. Those that are born again by the work of the Spirit, those that have confessed him ha as Lord. Correct, correct. And we looked at the, our scripture, which is also one of our um, key scriptures, foundational scriptures at ANT, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I kind of expanded on the point that, you know, um, this idea of us being new creation is not here on earth is not a, a place of arrival. It's an ongoing work by the spirit, okay? So the more that we yield to the spirit, the more that we surrender ourselves to his lordship, the more that we um, allow his authority um, to have influence over our lives is the more that we um, are, uh, that we become more like him, right? So the next question is, what are three things we possess as a new creation? What are three things that we possess as a new creation? I'm going to ask Tabore, Steph. And who else was here? And Jess. Tabore, Steph, and Jess. What are three things we possess as a new creation? Um, I could say one of them. We have the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah um righteousness that's right correct keyword righteousness yeah Steph are you able to answer righteousness BIM what are three things we possess as a new creation Is it peace? Yeah, peace, peace, correct. Anyone else? Alexandra, certainly because your name is spelled out. Oh, Alexandra, what is another thing we possess as a result of being new creations? Um, joy. Yep, correct. Perfect. Yeah. So the three things that we possess as a new creation is righteousness. Remember, I spoke about, you know, being living a life of conscious righteousness is really, really righteous consciousness, sorry, is really, really important because it releases us from shame. It releases us from guilt. It gives us the confidence and the boldness to stand and to have this fellowship and commune with God, right? Because we understand through our faith in Jesus, we have been made right before God, right? 
um, we've been made right and we explore different scriptures to that served as evidence around this, right? And so this righteous consciousness allows us to walk freely and to live fearlessly and to also be um to also be a master over sin, right? It empowers us to be masters over sin. When we live in that righteous consciousness, in the reality that we have been made right through Jesus Christ, right? Through our faith in Christ Jesus and what he did, right? It allows us to stand boldly and it allows us to master sin, right? It enables us to overcome like little mindedness, anything that the enemy would use to undermine who we are and to undermine our identity. Why? Because Jesus has done it. He's paid it, right? Um, there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8 verses 1. Why? Because Jesus has done it. Jesus has paid it, right? <laughs> like there's nothing more and we can't earn it we can't work for it it's it's like there's nothing we can do because it's already done peace being access to god right we have access the peace of god allows us to access god so flowing from that righteousness is now this peace that we have to access god right so even on our worst day we still have access why because we are righteous Okay, everyone tracking, right? And so Christ is now our peace, right? Christ is now our peace. And then lastly, one of the things that we spoke about was joy in the Holy Spirit. That in the Holy Spirit, that's an experience that we now have access to, that we can now have with God, that joy. He wants our joy to be full. Like we weren't called to live in a space of um in a space of just perpetual sadness or um, depression or oppression. No, through the power and the work of the Holy Spirit, it produces the fruit of joy. And we spoke about um, joy being a fruit of the Spirit, okay? And so us knowing this now, um, again, allows us to stand confidently and boldly um, when we relate with God. When we relate with God, there is this assurance that we now have, that we now possess, right? So we went through key things that as a result of our new creation, we have authority over the power of darkness. We have power or ability to be overcomers. So we have victory. Um, we're blessed with all spiritual blessings. So we now have this spiritual um, inheritance, right? Ability to manifest the fruit of the spirit. Um, five, we possess faith. Everyone has a measure of faith. Um, we have the ability to now fulfill God's purpose for our lives. Seven, man, we are able to manifest the wisdom of God. Eight, we receive the Holy Spirit. So we now have um, the Holy Spirit um, dwelling in us. Um, we become, number nine, we become his amb ambassadors as a result of our new creation reality. And number 10, we manifest the Zoe life of God. I spoke about John 10, 10, that the agenda of the enemies to kill, steal and destroy. But Jesus said that I have come so that you may have life more abundantly. Okay. And so it's not only an abundant life, um, when we are in eternity, though nothing compares to when we are in eternity, but it's also the abundant life that we can now possess here on earth that comes from the inside, right? Through the power and the work of the Holy Spirit, this abundant life that we can have here on earth and experience, and it will channel out on the outside. Glory be to God. So that is our recap. And I want to encourage everyone to um, replay last week, um, the last two weeks that we have done um, so far. So I want us to really be diligent in replaying those um, sessions because like I said, when you catch this, when you understand this, when you really receive it, it will shift the way that you live your life um, as a believer from day to day. It will shift it, it will revolutionize it. Amen. Everyone got that? Give me some hearts in the chat.
So next week, when I'm asking y'all to recap, you guys will have many things to say because you've been <laughs> you've been replaying and watching it back. These are fundamental truths, fundamental truths that every believer should be anchored in, right? It's, it's the bridge between who you are right now and who God is calling you to be and the assignment that is on your life is it, it hinges upon your revelation and your understanding and reception of these fundamental and foundational truths, amen? I see you guys. I see you guys. So today we are going to be um, doing a topic that is very close and dear to my heart. Um, and I really believe that um, this right here, um, this topic that we're about to get into um, is really, really important. And that is the father heart of God, the father heart of God. I want everyone to put love in the chat love in the chat just put just put love in the chat put love in the chat right the father heart of god i believe that you know this revelation and this understanding of the father heart of god um has completely shifted and changed my life and the way that i do life um and as a disciple this is something that you know we all have to um really really come into agreement with concerning our lives and you know I'm just gonna actually ask you guys because we did the exercise last week we started the exercise of receiving um the love of Christ receiving the love um actually being in prayer and just actually bringing it into reality really bringing it into our now into our present and I really want to ask like um just two people um how has that been? How has you just taken a moment before prayer to just say, I receive your love for me? How has that changed you? Um, yeah, I want to I wanna just hear from y'all. Don't all come at me at once. <laughs> Anyone can go. Um, I would say it's really been helping to um, just, I guess, motivate me to pray in more of a positive way. So pray with the scriptures and mm. pray um, from a place of authority as opposed mm. to from the inside of my situation or the, or the, uh, the re maybe like the reality of what it is that I'm feeling, but to mm. pray from the reality of how much I'm loved by God and then mm. to let that inform like the posture in prayer so it's just helped you know uh, kind of to move in authority as opposed to like a almost like a begging stance like please you know like naturally you know upon that revelation of the love of God it's just it's just much easier to pray mm. um, yeah I love that I love that awesome thank you for sharing Tony anyone else one more person. Um, it's allowed me to come with a different type of expectancy. So not an expectancy of God doing something, but just an expectancy of desire, oh. and genuine joy that just, and having like that Tony said, that authority, knowing that I can come boldly before his throne oh. in any which way I am, any which mess or or not mess and just but have an expectation and a dwelling of of joy, love, and desire. Mm, I love that. I love that. Just that expectation, no matter what season you're in, no matter what state or condition you're in, that basically God will meet you as he does as a good father. I really, really love that. Thank you for sharing, Tabore. So the father heart of God, um, like I said, I believe is a key, um, a key topic. And as I was praying into this, I really felt that us as a &T, this is something that the Lord really, really wants us to really grab a hold of and really receive. Um, when we're talking about um, us being new creations and this new birth that we've had as a result, you know, of our faith in, in Christ, um, 
the new birth also enables us to possess the nature of God, which is love, right? And so we are, um, this law of love governs the new creation believer, okay? So um, as a result of us being new creations, um, we are to not only receive love, but we are called to also release love, right? And our ability to release love um, comes from, it must come from a space of the overflow of the love that we are already receiving in Abba, in the Father, right? And so um, the law of love, and we're going to go through the scripture, should govern us in the entirety of our lives, like, and, and who we are. First John chapter four, verses seven to nine says, beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. I hope you can all see my screen. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God. Wow. He who loves does not know God. So y'all. Um, does not know God, for God is love. And this, this, the love of God was manifest, manifested towards us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him, right? So for love is of God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Very, very powerful, powerful, powerful scripture. Let us love one another for God, for love is of God, right? Then it goes on to say, for God is love. Like whoever does not love does not know God right? <laughs> For that's who he is. It's in his nature. Like it, it's, it, it, it encapsulates the entirety of who God is, right? For God is love. In this love, the in this, the love of God was manifested towards us. So he's demonstrated his love. And we see that his love is um, it, like we, he saw that we, we were willing, he was willing to die for us, right? Um, through his son, right? And so, this is very, very key for us to um, really understand, right, as new creation believers, okay? Ooh. So, y'all, this is not. John 13, verses 34 to 35, it says, so now I am giving you a new commandment, love each other. It's been highlighted. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So the proof of your discipleship isn't necessarily how good you can sing or how great you can preach or how great you can host or how great you can present or anything else. The proof of your discipleship is marked by your ability to love. Why? Because love is a, is a, is a reflection of who you follow, who you follow. It's a reflection of the father who is love, right? We cannot express the, what we ourselves are not experiencing. We cannot express what we ourselves are not experiencing, right and this is why like everything is a is is a is charted right everything flows within each other right we started our first week talking about what is a disciple and what that looks like and the sacrifices of being a disciple I spoke about you know counting the cost if you're really a disciple you got to count the cost of what it really means to follow wholeheartedly 
Christ our Lord. It means that we are relinquishing all that we thought we knew for who he is, right? And so we started off there in terms of what it means to be a disciple um, because, and then new creation realities because there is this call for us to go through that process of renewal, that process of, um, of, of unlearning and relearning who we are truly meant to be because that experience with God, that experience with his love expresses itself into the earth, right? When we're talking about the kingdom of God, we are talking about his rule and reign, but his rule and reign cannot happen without us being channels, without us being bodies, or without us being, um, uh, what do you call it, ambassadors of that. And one of the ways that we are Im ambassadors of that is through our love, through our love for one another, right? And through that ongoing revelation of his deep love for us. So through our revelation is our encounter with him, then our revelation of how loved we are. And then that is reflected and revealed in how we engage with other people, whether they are believers or whether they're not, whether we agree with people's lifestyles or we don't. Like the love can be constant. Why? Because we've seen it revealed in the Father, right? And so... I really sense for us um, as children of God in this season, there is this, this call from the Father to really experience his love, right? Within the context of his of true and pure fatherhood that he possesses. Right? Everyone with me. Just just I don't know which you can type. What can I say? Type. Like father, it's quite long, but hey, <laughs> right? So this, this is a new commandment. We we are now governed under we 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 now are governed under a new a new law, sorry, a new commandment, which is love. Love each other, right? Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. So we cannot give what we are not receiving ourselves. And so this is important because we are disciples. We are called to emulate our Lord Jesus, right? To follow him. And so if we're really following him and we're really examining him, um, then we will find that Jesus revealed the father. This was through his own life and also um, his relationship with the father. So how Jesus engaged the father, how he interacted with the father. When you read the gospels, right, um, we see Jesus um, really um, uh, expressing the personality and different facets of God, right? When the scripture says that he was moved with compassion, that's also an attribute of the father, that he is a compassionate father, right? Um, and so we see that expression there of the father, but also how Jesus engaged with the father was a direct illustration or a direct example of what we now can do as children of God, as new creations, right? We can now engage with the father the same way that Jesus engaged with the father, right? The same way that they had this fellowship, and this is why I love the book of John, because it really does show, you know, um, the heart, like the, the um, emotion, the vulnerability of Jesus and his engagement with the Father. It really, really shows that when you really read it properly and really examine it, you really see that, oh, okay, like Jesus, what the son really had a relationship with the Father. So he reveals, you know, he reveals the father right in how he lived but also in how he engaged with the father is an example to us in how we are to engage with the father right and so um and so it's really important for us to grab a hold of that 
um, to really look at the life of Jesus and even think right now, like what moments were there in the life of Jesus that you have read that, you know, he had this encounter, he had this engagement with the father or certain attributes that he displayed are actually a display of the father, right? John 14 verses seven to nine, it says, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. This is Jesus talking. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the father. So how can you say, show us the father? right? Again, Jesus revealed the father through how he, um, how he moved and how he lived, okay? He's, he revealed the personality and name of God. He was an example of how we should engage. Jesus declared the father of God, the fatherhood of God, even when he taught us how to pray, right? He said, our father, he started the prayer like that, our father, right? And so if he's saying our father, if he's saying our father, what does that make, what does that make us? What is our position now in prayer? Our position now in prayer should be a posture of a son, a posture of a child, because we have now been brought into um, this deeper, more intimate relationship with the father as a result of our faith in Jesus. OK, and so it's really, really important that we that we that we grab a hold of this. Our father, even that declaration of our father in the prayer. And it's funny, he didn't he didn't start with um, hallowed be your name. He started with our father, even that our father. It brings us into commune. It brings us into it's, it's like our it's something that we share. Right. Leke, our father, Jess, our father, Tambo, our father, Tony, our father, Tosin and Aisha, our father. We now share in this fatherhood. We now engage in this fatherhood. Right. And so it's re it's revealed there um, in the prayer. Amen. Amen. And so when we're looking at the life of Jesus, right. Um, let's read Matthew 3 verses 17. It says, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved son in whom I am now well pleased. Jesus went to be baptized, right? He went to be baptized um, and, and, and he's coming out of the water. And this is the father just, just affirming, just rejoicing, just delighting in the son, right? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Before, uh, when you read the next chapter in Matthew chapter four, it says that Jesus was led into the wilderness. He's in the wilderness. And then it speaks about him starting, you know, you begin to see um, the revealing of his ministry. He begins to go out, etc. And, you know, it's really interesting when we look at that, because before Jesus did anything, before he, he it was noted or documented that he'd healed someone, before he even probably turned water into wine, right? God was pleased with him. Jesus, Jesus didn't need to earn that. He didn't need to do anything for that. But God delighted him in such a way that there was this, this affirmation, right? This public affirmation. Um, and I believe that this affirmation from the father was the foundation of Jesus's ministry. It was the anchor right? Like I said, in the next chapter, you find Jesus entering his process and then into ministry. I even believe that this affirmation is what allowed him to endure the process of the wilderness, right? 
him living, him receiving this beloved identity allowed him to really enjoy, to walk through that process, to overcome temptation, the temptation of Satan, right? And to go into ministry and to have, you know, this continuous fellowship with the father throughout his ministry. It began right here in this affirmation. And I believe that this, this speaks to the core of who we are. I believe that every, the, 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 the every, there's a d- deep desire within every human being to be loved and known and to be seen to belong and to be accepted right but when you dwell here in this in this truth and in this revelation that he is pleased with you before you do anything when you dwell right there when you meditate on that on that truth right there. It revolutionizes how you respond in the midst of the wilderness. It revolutionizes how you behave and how you conduct yourself when you do get platforms and stages and opportunities and power and money. It revolutionizes the way that you engage with it because it's like, these are additional things. These don't make me, but what he says, how he sees me, the fact that I'm accepted in the beloved, the fact that I belong long in him right that's all that matters to me and so I can't be swayed I can't be moved with those additional things because what is important what I found great refuge in and great um healing in and great freedom in is this affirmation that Leke is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased Tambo is my son in whom I'm well pleased Jess is my daughter in whom I am well pleased I am pleased with them and even if you do nothing else I am pleased with you you don't need a stage to receive his affirmation before you sing you should already be experiencing that affirmation in secret before you intercede before you know you lead prayers at 6 a.m in the morning there's already this you're already set ablaze by this this truth this truth that does not change because God does not lie because he is a good father you're already set ablaze by a truth that has now become your anchor And so you're flowing from that place, right? I'm not striving because I'm loved. I can rest because I'm loved, because he's pleased. I can step away, you know, I can step away from ministry for a while because I'm loved. Right. And God is so generous and so passionate about me and so passionate about the assignment on my life. He knows me inside and out that those things are a given. And, you know, um, you guys know that I, I will always use myself as a personal example. But, you know, this truth right here revolutionized my life. Like and I've said that multiple times, but it really did. Like, because I'm not, you know, people always say that phrase, like living on for the audience of one, the applause of one. But how true is that? <laughs> how true? Our responses will say that when we don't have no money, when things don't go our way, when the spouse isn't here yet and all of that time. How true really is that? You know, <laughs> like, how true really? How much is, is that your anchor? Is that your true? You know, and so when we're talking about exercises of, you know, receiving, like, Lord, I receive, it's, it's dwelling in truths like this. And even right now, I just really want to in, like, really bring us in a moment, like, I want to pause, and I want us to make a, a confession right now, and really close our eyes and say, God, you are pleased with me. Like, speak it out, take it in for a moment. That God, you are pleased with me. Yeah, Lord, you're pleased. God, you are pleased with us. Lord, you love me so much. Mm. Yeah, you rejoice over us with singing, Lord. You delight in me. Yeah, you're so pleased. So pleased. You are pleased with Jess. You are pleased with Tambo. You are pleased with Bim. Yeah, God, you're pleased with Tosan. 
you're pleased with Aisha, you delight in Tony, you are pleased with her, you are pleased with Bolly, you are pleased with Ariel, with Jeffrey and Michelle, you are pleased with Tamika, Lord, you are pleased with Shola, you are pleased with Damola and Alexandra, Lord, you are, you, you are pleased with Azaze, God, you, you love us so much, yeah, we receive that right now, yeah, Jesus' name, amen. Because every so often we have to allow ourselves to dwell in that truth. And when I say ever so often, it could be throughout the day, um, daily, moment by moment. It's a truth that we really need to receive. And something that the Lord um, spoke to me about was, um, I remember when I was doing a lot of work at the time and um, I went to a hotel stay somewhere and the Lord spoke these words to me, you know, I was going there to be like, I'm going to seek God. I'm going to, just going to pray like, I'm going to come back with explosive revelation. And the Lord said to me, even if you do nothing else, you are still loved. Even if you do nothing else, you are still loved. And this revelation, this truth um, breaks the will to try and earn and work for love, right? This truth removes every will and desire to strive, you know, and it brings us into this space where we can relate with God, the father, the same way Jesus related with the father. I think, you know, even in all honesty, you know, I didn't have a good, I, I didn't know my biological father. I didn't know him. I didn't have that opportunity to know him. Um, and that was very, very hard for me. Um, more so when I got into my teenage years, simply because, you know, I lost my mom as well um, when I was seven years old. And so I didn't have this opportunity to be identified by something. So I can't, I can't say to you, oh, I am this way because my dad was this way. Um, I can't say that I have the same nails as my dad because I didn't know what, I didn't meet my dad, you know, I, I don't have access to that, right? And even those that were father figures in my life, they didn't do a good, uh, the best job of um, really being or being consistent in who they said they were going to be. Um, there was a lot of disappointment. Um, there was a lot of let down there was a lot of abandonment there and rejection there and then obviously just day to day with men there was rejection and abandonment there and so here I am I come into Christ and all I know especially not even with just men but my experiences with people all I know is that if Susan acts like X she will get this right? If Susan does this, like there was this constant striving and this constant desire to be like, remember the deep human need is to be loved, seen and accepted, right? Like, so where I was in deficit growing up with that acceptance, with that sense of belonging, remember, I don't have brother or sister. I, I'm just... I was an orphan jumping from house to house. One person didn't want me, another person didn't want me. And so I've come, I've carried the same mindset and the same attitude or the same perspective when I come into Christ. And now I'm like, I've got to, to earn, I've got to earn. And maybe there's some days that God doesn't love me and maybe he's mad at me today. And you know, maybe he's far from me now because I've done this and I've done that. And so, it, it was very hard for me to even trust God, to even put my full trust in him, right? And so I had in my first early years of being a Christian, I made a lot of mistakes, right? I made a lot of mistakes, but not only mistakes. Um, I, I, I look back and I'm like, I wish you would have gotten this, um, this, this revelation earlier, you know, because it would have shifted, you know, um, just the way you do life you know, you wouldn't be in the relationships you were in, you wouldn't um, tolerate the things that you would tolerate if you knew this, but God, God is so good and so gracious that eventually I have come into this, right, but every so often, sometimes those, 
those those practices those habits can come in where you're like oh let me just do 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 right am i am i by myself like just just be like you're not alone okay in the chat okay um i'm always going to be transparent with you guys so that you know that nothing that you are feeling or that you've um experienced regarding this topic is foreign you know um but yeah i didn't have good relationships okay and so um, when I began to understand this, and yes, like I said, there's some moments and some habits that come in um, where, you know, you're like, oh, let me do, do, do. And God is like, no, 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 you know, <laughs> like, that's not how it works. You can't earn your way. And I feel like there's certain situations, even in the past few years, where I felt like God has been like, stand down stand down don't over strive for that opportunity stop overworking for that opportunity stop just just be and certain opportunities have just fell into my lap why because like where i stop where i end god continues he's a good father he's generous there is no good thing that he withholds from me why because he's good that's the possession of who he is it's who he is it's his personality okay and so when God gave me this, even if you do nothing else, you are still loved. It gave me such an assurance and such a rooting that I do not need to work. And that was revealed also in my relationship. If you feel like I owe you something, then we cannot be as deep friends in this context any longer. OK, because Jesus doesn't even require this of me, darling. OK, <laughs> you know, it shifted it. I didn't, there was no settling. There was more, like I, I kept, I could, I could believe for more in my life because I knew that because he's a good father and he loves me so much that there was, as a result of me being a child, there was more, I had access to more. Does that make sense, everyone? Yeah. And so this revelation of even if you do nothing else, you are still loved. Like I said, we go back to Jesus. He, did, he didn't do much, right? didn't do much but there was this delight that the father had in the son there was this affirmation that I'm pleased with him and that's true of us also that he is pleased with us even on our worst day I want to look at a scripture um Ephesians 1 verses 4 to 5 it says even before he made the world God loved us my gosh he loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes, right? So in Christ, we are made holy, but we are called to live holy, amen? God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family. So I came into the revelation that though I did not have my family, my blood family, that now I was being poor. I'd been adopted by the father. I was adopted, having the same rights as Jesus. We spoke about this last week. And now I'm in this family by bringing us into himself through Christ Jesus. This is what he wanted to do. That's right there, guys. This is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure. He wanted to do it. He wanted to do it and it gave him great pleasure. He wanted to die. He wanted to send his son to die. It gave him great pleasure because he loved us even before he made the world. Powerful. And so before Jesus did anything so no my notes are wrong with here sorry guys right this is powerful it's something for us to grasp right that God loved us when he before he formed and he framed and he shaped us he loved us right he decided in advance he already had a plan for mankind he decided in advance to adopt us into his own family and so it's the spirit that reveals the fatherhood of God. So there's a typo, a typo there. The spirit reveals the fatherhood of God in us. It, it reveals him, who he is. It affirms to us who he is. Romans 8 verses 14 to 17. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. 
my gosh, the spirit himself bears me witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. It's the spirit that affirms our true identity. That's why it's so important that we're walking in line with the spirit. The scripture says in John 14, it speaks about the spirit leading us into all truth. No, John 16, about the spirit leading us into all all truth, right? It's the spirit that affirms our true identity. Our identity is not what we build. Our identity is not what we do. Those are just an outflow, right? But our identity is us as sons, his children, right? Um, and something that I would pray daily now when I was coming into this revelation of, you know, that I was adopted and he was a father to me. I would say, I would pray daily. I'll be like, Holy Spirit, bring me into the full knowledge and understanding of my identity. Affirm to me. This is what it means to pray scripture. Affirm to me that I am your child. Bring that to the forefront. Like affirm to me that I am your child, that I am an heir, that I have an inheritance, right? And so it's about us continuously asking the Holy Spirit to give us a revelation, right? We are not only called to be disciples, followers of Christ, but we are sons. We are called into friendship, right? And the beautiful thing about us living in this, um, this, this understanding through the revelation of the Holy Spirit, right, is that this affirmation, this, this constant affirmation produces assurance in us. And when I say assurance, not insurance, guys, okay, <laughs> assurance in us, it, it gives us the assurance that we can fully trust God because we believe we are deeply loved. And when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about Josias, right? And parenthood has a way of really revealing the fatherhood of God, right? I was thinking about Josiah and Josiah went through this period where, you know, um, at around seven months, eight months, he went through this period of separation anxiety because he was starting to, to become more aware that, you know, mom and dad leave the room. Mom and dad leaves the room. Mom and dad can sometimes go away. And so he would cry sometimes. Or when he wakes up in the morning, he would cry. Why? Because there is almost like this anxiety of, I don't know where you are. I don't know whether you're coming back. I, I don't know. I don't know. But over the process of time, as you know, we've continued to adorn him with love and we've continued to return and just love on him and love on him and our presence affirming you know, that we are here, right? The more and more that this love and he's coming into the awareness, right? Mom and dad love me. They give me kisses when I wake up in the morning. They always, come, you know, the more and more he's coming into that awareness. And now Josiah can spend an hour in his car playing with his toys because he has an assurance. He has an assurance that mom and dad are going to come. Mom and dad are not going to reject me. They're not going to abandon me. They're coming back. They're returning, right? I don't need to be anxious because, like, I'm loved. Like, I know, like, they are here. They are present. Like, there is an assurance that he has. So he doesn't need to worry. You'll be there an hour and a half just playing, smiling, cracking joke with himself. It's a good life. I love his soft life. I love it for him, right? <laughs> and so it's the same with us, right? There is this assurance in the midst of struggle, in the midst of pain, in the midst of heartbreak, in the midst of loss, in the midst of grief, in the midst of not getting the things that we may have wanted to get. There is an assurance in the midst of things going left, going right. There is an assurance. There is an assurance because I am deeply loved with the father that this is not the end. This is not where it ends for me. I am assured I can fully trust God. Anxiety doesn't have to have full influence over my life or my decision-making because I am assured I trust God. Is everyone checking? Is everyone, 
everyone, everyone can just see people in the cameras. Like, is everyone, that, that's some good news right there, right? There's an assurance there. I heard today, I was listening to a sermon, so a sermon on beloved identity by Damon Thompson. And he said, where Thanksgiving, where Thanksgiving is, anxiety has no place. Where Thanksgiving is, anxiety has no place. Where there's gratitude, where there's Thanksgiving in the fact that we're so deeply loved and so deeply known by the Father, like anxiety has no space. It can't dwell there. There is a peace. Remember, we're going back to last week, right? As new creations, like righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, right? There is there, like those things can be fully present because we are anchored in a truth that we are loved, right? I just wanna hear thoughts in the room. We're gonna pause for a second. Um, any thoughts in the room? Real thoughts. How's everyone feeling? You can write in the chat, you can come off of mute. <laughs> How's everyone feeling? Um, I have a thought. Hi. Um, I, um, I felt like what you said, um, especially when you used the um, example of Josiah's was really, really good. Um, because even like even looking at it from a psychological perspective, like that's basically called a secure attachment. And when you think about, <clears throat> sorry, I'm not feeling too right. bad. Um, when you think about secure attachments, we think about we think about it with our biological parents, mm -hmm. but it made me think about how I'm screwed totally. <laughs> um, it made me think about um, how, like, what is my how do I how do I relate to God? Because when you think about attachments as well, it informs how we relate to other people as well. How we see how we how I re, how we develop relationships with other people, how we trust other people. So if I have a secure attachment to God, that will also inform my walk, um, mm -hmm. how I relate to myself and how I relate to others. But if it's anxious, if it's disorganized like the others, mm -hmm. then there's gonna be issues there's gonna be issues basically. So I think it was just really interesting um using that example. Yeah, I love that. Dr. Ariel in the house, everybody. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Dr. Ari Ariel, no, um, yeah, no, that's dope. Like I love that you've you've said that, right? Because again, there's this, 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 this close connection between how we believe the Father sees us, right? How we believe the Father loves us and how that flows into our, um, our relationships, right? How it flows into our relationships. And so, um, yeah, it's gonna overflow. It's really going to find its place there. So if I use myself as an example, right? Because there was there was some form of um, there was a great love deficit, you know, after my mom had passed away, and I'd experienced what I'd experienced. I wasn't really um, I didn't desire to make connections with people that were long term. <laughs> like there's no way. Like I was just like, no, I'm good. Peace out. Peace down. A town down. Like I'll need to do that, right? I don't need to listen to you. I don't need to, like, it came out in the way I engaged, even in the way that I engaged with authority, if I was at work, et cetera, even the way I received information, how I processed, you know, how people, I felt people were towards me. Why? Because there was, there wasn't a security there. There wasn't, there wasn't an, an abundance of love. So I feel like it flows, it flows. And that's why when we go back to our, our scripture that we started with in first John, it says that it speaks about how he has loved us. It has to come from us. And even when we look at Christ and the church, when you look at the instruction to the husbands, we love you husbands, right? When you look at the instructions to the husbands is as Christ loved the church, right? And marriage is a reflection should be, right? If we're talking about a believer's marriage, it should be a reflection of how Christ adorns the church, how he loves the church, how he delights in the church, right? It should be, it should, and the and as a result, um, the impact of that, the response like of that, right? There's so there's this this bouncing or this flow. 
that happens in between husband and wife that is a flow also in the way the father is with the son do you understand what i'm saying there's this constant flow right there was another example i was going to give christ in the church um and then yeah jesus and, and jesus the son um with the father right there's this constant so they're direct pictures and then thank you lord holy spirit right and then right one of the greatest ways i heard a quote one of the greatest ways that the world would know that god so loved them is through the church is through the church right the expression of who he is when we're talking about kingdom come your will be done right we're talking about not only power like i'm prophesying over you you know and apostles and you know those are great we love but it's love 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 is a way of expressing the kingdom And that's why Paul spoke about in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. But when you go back to 1 Corinthians 12, right, he's, he names all of the, the gifts of the spirit and, you know, all of this stuff. And he speaks about there are many parts, but we are one, et cetera, et cetera. Then he goes into 1 Corinthians 13 and he speaks about love. He's like, but what does it mean if I prophesy, if I speak in tongues, but I have not love? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't mean it's clanging. It's like a clanging symbol. So, you know, I love saying this. Two, two things can be true at the same time. Like, many gifts, many parts, great. You know, I believe one of the churches in Revelation, they were doing great. Fruitful, thriving, but no love. They forsook their first love, sorry. Right? so important for us to grab a hold of this um and so i don't know if there's any other comments i'm gonna move right on everyone checking yeah say good 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 in the chat good good i want to see everybody's name hey say you um good 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 in the chat you're checking if this is blessing your heart right any other comments tambo did you want to say something I saw your camera come on. That's why I was asking. Okay, you I'm, know, it's funny. I, I thought I, you were I, making an appearance. That's all. <laughs> was, no, no, no. I was literally trying to write good, good in the chat. And oh, I oh, it, oh. Like, I'm here listening. I've, I've got somebody that's way past their bedtime. Hey. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm here. Um, I was going to quickly say that what you said in terms of how you summarize it in terms of like knowing your position would mean understand how you're loved. I remember when I first when my mindset was still a bit hazy and I first read the prodigal son or in Luke 15, it talks about the shepherd leaving the um, 99 to go after the one. Yeah. I was like, oh Lord, but like, how are you going to leave me? Like, I could, I'm part of the 99, you're going to leave me. So I still had that like attachment issues of like, oh, wow. Well, it's so funny that I was seeing, reading that and thinking God is going to me to go after someone else, which is exactly... Mm analogy he used with a prodigal son mm. and I, um but I've moved from that mindset a long time ago but I remember I was reading it today and Luke 30 says um so the son was the, the older son was saying look these many years I have served you and I never disobeyed your command yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends mm -hmm. but when the son of yours came when he was devoured when he was devoured your property with pr prostitutes, you killed a fattened cow for him. And then the father said, and he said to him, son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. Oh. That line really just like solidified. Yeah. Like, wow, like I should understand the position that I'm in. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. It's realizing, I love that you've highlighted that. It's realizing the position that, you know, you have. That's why I'm, I spoke about, the prayer our father what how does that position us what does that then make you that's how you have to look at it this is not just jesus and you know we can go through a whole breakdown of the lord's prayer and what it means for us it doesn't it's not just for us to create a religious you know prayer but it's actually us drawing certain prayer points from there but i digress but when we look at that first opening our father 
it, it places a position. It's echoing something. It's echoing a part, our father. It positions us. Oh, okay, father, child. Father, child, imagine, teach us how to pray and, and, and Jesus leads with that, speaks volumes, speaks volumes in, in, in how we are to engage the father. And so I love that you said that, um, Tabore. I love that. We always have to be in constant, um, in the constant reality of our position and what we possess and what we inherit as a result of it, right? And so Jesus demonstrated true submission as a son to the father during his earthly life. And passion. And I think this is really, really important because when you look at John, um, first John, it speaks about love and obeying commands, right? And naturally, um, as we grow in this revelation of our sonship, it allows us to channel this not only in how we love others, but also demonstrating it in our true submission as a son. Like I can obey your word and I can obey um. I can submit um, because um, of my revelation and, and my place, my position that I know I have in you. And submission, the lack of submission is also a love issue. It's also a love issue, that ability to obey, that ability to submit. In, it's also a love issue. It's also a love issue. Because Jesus was able to say, though he was able to confess that, yo, like, <laughs> if it, if you're willing, take this cup from me, I'm feeling the pressure. The pressure is getting worse and worse. Like, <laughs> um, but then he was able to position himself in a, a posture of, but not my will, but your will be done. Because of his adamant trust in the Father's love for him, right? And so submission, um, Submission really also reveals just how loved and just how assured you are of the Father. Like your obedience, like if you love me, you will obey my commands. So it's a, it's a, it, it says to me that, you know, wow, like, um, when I think about this and when, when I think about the love of God, like I need to be perfected in love. I need a greater revelation of your love. There is a fear here that is stopping me from walking in alignment with you, walking in alignment with your, with your commandments, walking in alignment with your truth and with your word. There is something that is hindering me from really grabbing a hold of this and it's fear. Is fear. There's fear here. Whether it's remember, um, it was PA spoke about, Pastor Aya spoke about on Sunday about, you know, um the, the parable of the talents. And he spoke about that one that buried it. And he said, because I knew you were a dot dot dot, right? A harsh man, a harsh master. This is what I did, right? Fear, fear was present. And so fear disabled him from carrying out the instruction that he was given, from really multiplying what he had, fear. And so we can see here that fear doesn't produce in a manner that glorifies God, but love does. When you go to John 15, when you read it through, love does. If we're abiding in him, we are therefore abiding in love, right? And through this, when you go further down, it speaks about, you know, um, abiding in his word, bearing fruit and people knowing that you are his disciple. So could it be that your lack of obedience, your lack of, in, of, of following through with instruction, submission, your issues with God's authority ultimately is more of a love issue than it is a um, any other issue. It could be, <laughs> right? 
Um, could it be food for thought? Your consistency as a disciple, could it be that it is a love issue? Because if you really love him, then you obey his commands. Oh, sorry, wrong, right? So I really want to take a moment um, here and I want us to um, get into groups. I'm going to give you breakout. Um, Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna have you in breakout rooms. Glory be to God. It's gonna be good, y'all. It's gonna be good. Um, and I want you guys to go through the following scriptures, discuss the following scriptures in your groups. Um I want you to go through what resonates with you most and what does it teach you about the father and his nature. So group one is um, room one. That is the group with um, Pastor Ayo, Damola. I believe M is Mo um, and Shola. So that is group one. So that is PA's group. If you can take a screenshot on your phone of it, 1 John 4, 7 to 11, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 8, Romans 5, 5. Group two is Jeffrey and Michelle, Stephanie, Taiwo and Tabore, um, take a screenshot. Group three is Bim, Jess, Mo, and Tony. Group three, take a screenshot of that. First John 4 17, that's Bim's group. Group four is Leke, Ariel, and Tambo. Leke, Ariel, and Tambo, group four. Take a screenshot. Group five is Faisara, Tamika, and Terry. Faisara, Tamika, and Terry. Everyone got that? Yeah? I'm going to give you a moment. Take a screenshot. So group five is Faisara's group. Group four is Leke's group, Leke and Ore. Um, group three is Bim's group. Group two is Jeffrey's group. Oh, Bolu. I'm not sure why that is. Um, I will move you into probably group five or well, whatever group. I'll, I'll move you anyway. Um, and group one is um, Pastor Ayo's group, right? Everyone all good with that? Awesome. So awesome. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you guys had good conversations, um, breaking down those scriptures. But I want to quickly hear from um, everybody. Let me know in the chat as well. Hope you guys are good. Um, yeah, let me know. Let me know. Um, so I um, would like to hear from group one. Uh, what resonated with you most? What did it teach you about the father? Like, yeah, shoot. Um, I believe that was Pastor Ayo's group, but I'll let Damola um, take this one or Shola. Was Shola in your group? I believe so. Yeah, um, cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll split it. But yeah, I think for me, first John 4, 7 to 11, I think, yeah, like I think our discussion was like really dope. I think it was like very just sobering to, to, to learn, on, like to relearn and to, really deep like everything about the love of God and and I think in in, in particular in this scripture um verse eight when it says but anyone who does not love does not know God for God is love and I think this for me is like really powerful because I think sometimes because of like sometimes just for us like for me the goal is like building 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 and growing and learning and developing and fruit and all these good stuff which is all good stuff right but I think it made me think about potentially how much of this have I done in vain because along the way I haven't loved, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
and even in like the scripture when it speaks about like letting love be your highest goal like I think it's and, and I think we spoke about just just really quickly like how important it is to come back to what seems basic but really is just the like the, like the epitome of like faith which is just love um so yeah it's it's really like yeah so roomy but I will hand over to, to Charlotte for anything else that she wanted to add um, yeah thanks Damara now we had a really um in-depth conversation um we were talking about how love has to be the foundation of everything so all things so like any revelation I think PA mentions any revelation knowledge or action that is not rooted of in love is not of God mm. and um yeah just the importance of how our measuring stick sometimes as um Damara was saying we can get caught up in the busy like just doing and it's like um our measure stick of faith of ourselves as believers is not actually our gifts but it's actually in how we love people it's just mm. um, the importance of focus on that and I said um so yeah we really focus on the scripture first John 4 and um in verse 8 and um, what Damon was saying when it says anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love mm. um for me what I was really saying is um I think it just really speaks to intimacy that verse eight mm-hmm. and um yeah just how even so the fact that we if we don't love God per se it's just it comes down to a lot um a lack of intimacy sometimes where we don't actually know the father but we don't know his heart mm-hmm. um and I think I was saying how it's easy to have like you can have like knowledge of God or information of God but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean you have a revelation of mm-hmm. God or the father of how much he loves us and I think that comes down to it's, and that what really helps with that, I think, P.S., is what you always say, is really meditate on how much God that she loves us, really taking our time with the scriptures, really delve in, and, yeah, just that intimacy with the Lord. So, yeah, it was really sobering, our conversation. Mm, I love that. Um, I think something that you um, just highlighted, um, um, Charlotte, um, about really dwelling um on that truth and I think something that came to me was also being honest with the wounds that we have the fatherhood wounds that we have um even the motherhood wounds that we have like just wounds that have left that 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 has um basically brought forth this fear and this um this fear of rejection this fear of abandonment this um this fear of you know um of not belonging etc really being honest about that and I think this is the difference between um translating from theory into reality that like we actually recognize the need to know and be acquainted with this deep love where we are honest and we say you know what Actually, I have a love deficit here. I have a wound from my childhood. I have memories. I have experiences that have led me to believe that I'm forgotten, to led me to believe that I'm not as loved, that has led me to be very works orientated and to be almost like my own personal taskmaster when he is not a taskmaster, you know, um, I think is so, so important. The more we can be vulnerable with ourselves in that sense is the more that we're also allowing the love to really penetrate those areas and really um catapult us into a greater dimension of not only boldness and confidence but also destiny um hope everyone's leave a heart in the chat (laughs) group two i believe was jeffrey and michelle's group who's gonna be the spokesperson um, thank you, Group One. Really, really good. Um, and please read out um, First John four from verses twelve to sixteen. Um, don't worry about the Psalm one hundred three. And please do take a screenshot every one of these scriptures and meditate on them. Um, kind of make a study for yourself. Group two, Jeffrey and Michelle. Tabore, Stephanie, Tywo, somebody. I wanted to give Jeffrey and Michelle a chance to speak instead. Oh, okay. Jeffrey, Michelle. Do you want us to read the verse first? Yes. First, just first John 4, 12 to 16. Okay. Yeah. 
right um no one has ever seen god but if we love each other god lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us mm -hmm. and god has given us his his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us furthermore we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that, that the father sent this son or sent his son to be the savior of the world all who declared that Jesus is the son of God, have God living in them and they live in God. We know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love. God is love and all who live in love live in God and God lives in them. Thank you. Um, so I think my takeaway um, when we were discussing, I was just talking about um, just looking at both verses as far as how expansive God's love is and how how he really throughout the Bible even both in this verse um it talks about his expression of of his love is through us essentially but in in I think in the Psalms verse it was talking about how God revealed himself um to the Israelites revealed himself to Moses revealed his deeds to them um, in other ways, you know, he's revealed himself um, through his Holy Spirit, revealed himself through his son, Jesus Christ. And it was just uh, what I shared through the group is just showing how God is really in. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't have to show himself in so many ways, but he loves us so much that he's, his love is so expansive. He tries to express himself in all these multiple ways to really connect with us, his children. Um, and that was, just, I think I was just thinking how humbling that is that, you know, despite, our, you know, how sometimes insignificant we think we are, look how God is just, he's really yearning, he's really trying in so many domains to, um, to express himself, to show himself to us, and then to also show his love, not only directly from himself, but especially showing his love through us, his children, his people. How much more connected are you going to be than to other people? We see and connect with people on a day to day basis. That's probably, you know, as close as you're going to get every day you interact with someone. Um, mm -hmm. And God is trying to express himself even through that. So it's, it, I think for me, it was just a case of really a humbling thought but then also a reflection of you know from my own self if God is um expressing himself through us and his love is being expressed through us I it it just puts that you know thought in your head like how am I expressing God's love when I'm navigating through the world um mm -hmm. because as it says here he expresses his love through us um and it's just a reflection of thinking, you know, when I'm navigating through the world, how is that expression being put out and received by others around me? So um, that was what I'd shared. Yeah, no, that's so good. That's really, really good. Thank you for sharing, Michelle. Really, really good key things. It flows from us. Um, mm -hmm. Group three, Tony. Tony's group summary. I don't mind in the last verse 17 um first john 4 17 and as we live in god our love grows more perfect so we will not be afraid on the day of judgment but we can face him with confidence because we live like jesus here <clears throat> in this world such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear if we are afraid it is for fear of punishment and this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love we love each other because he loved us first if someone says i love god but hates a fellow believer that person is a liar for if we don't love people we can see how can we love god whom we cannot see and he has given us this command those who love god must also love their fellow believers go ahead tony brief summary of what you discuss. Sorry, I can't really speak right now. Okay, Jess, would you like to give a brief summary, please? Um, uh, what was our brief summary? We kind of went off on a tangent because of me, actually, because I was asking a question. Um, 
about what does perfect love look like um, in the context of that scripture. Um, and so, what, are, what, is, what did we discuss, really? Yeah, and so people were just sharing their thoughts on that. Um, and how, I guess, Tony was kind of saying how it's kind of like a, you look at the scripture, like sort of like a balance. So I guess perfect love, there is no, there is no fear. And there's, there's, yeah, she can't explain it now, but she was saying how it's like a balance. So on one end, you have perfect love. The other end, I guess, is, what did she say, like fearlessness, something along those lines. Um, but yeah, I can't explain what she said, but it was, it was good. I don't know if Bim wants to um, add to that. Go ahead, Bim. Yeah, you, you pretty much said it, Jess. Um, we were discussing that the, the, the scripture is telling us that there is a place for us to not have fear in life, which sometimes is contradictory to what we see. And, you know, in the world we live in, you know, people say things like feel the fear and do it anyway. Or, you know, if, if you're afraid, it means that, you know, you, you, you really want it and you can channel that energy into whatever. Um, and, and that has somehow conditioned us to normalize or accept um, being fearful, whatever the fear may be. Um, whereas the scripture is saying that there is no fear in perfect love. Like you can reach a point where you, you don't have no fear because the Bible is saying fear has to do with punishment and the one who fears is not made perfect in love. Um, so I think that really, in just answering that question, it really just helped us to expand on what does that scripture actually mean? Like, what is perfect love? Mm -hmm. Fearlessness. And when, when we approach God in fearlessness, we have that confidence. You know, the, the verse prior, it says, this is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence mm -hmm. on the day of judgment. So mm -hmm. I feel like the fearlessness and the confidence go hand in hand mm -hmm. and it is possible like scripture it's there in the bible so it's possible but sometimes that's not our reality mm -hmm. and we were saying that if it's not our reality it's just a case of us going back to scripture and renewing our minds daily mm -hmm. so that we get to that point where okay there's no fear and like you were saying earlier ps like we mm -hmm. sometimes we have to be um aware and kind of real with ourselves as to what are my fears or what are my wounds or what, what, where are the places where I feel like okay I haven't quite grasped the the love of God in this area and and bring that to God you know and in that you can start to renew your mind and hopefully get to a place where you no longer have that fear so it, yeah it was a really really interesting conversation we had I love that I love that PA was going to jump on that perfect love Quickly. Yeah, no, yeah, no, that, that's really good. Um, I mean, I think um, the verses before definitely explain, you know, what perfect love is, which I think been done really well. Um, essentially, perfect love is coming to a place of confidence that mm -hmm. when we see him on that day, we see him knowing that we will receive from him because we're not scared of anything we've done that's going to be um, requiring punishment, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this thing is deep because, like I said in my group, if anything is not born out of love, it's not of God. So therefore, on that day, it won't stand the test. Mm -hmm. So in that context now, because for him to expose that, it says verse 17, by this is, is love perfected with us so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. So he's really given us the explanation or sorry, the end goal of what love perfected in us looks like, being like how Jesus was in the world. But it's also highlighting that fear that, 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 that cripples us now in this present life has to do with the fact of we don't feel like we match up to what we're supposed to be on that day of judgment, which kind of goes back to what I was talking about on Sunday with the whole talent, where because we're scared that that guy, he dug the talent in the ground, right? Rather than actually 
because he understood him as a word, he actually meant to go and double it or whatever. So it's almost as if like love is going to motivate us into good works. Good works is going to take us on a journey of being perfected in love because he says here in verse 18, there is no fair in love, but perfect love casts out fair. He didn't say there's no fair and perfect love. He said there's no fair in love, but perfect love. Meaning love is being perfected. So this is progressive, guys. Mm. Dare I say, we don't arrive until that day. Yeah. That's, so yeah. that's why we, the Bible says that, the, the, um, that God is a rewarder of those that tingly seek him. Your lifestyle should reflect seeking until that day. Because First Corinthians 13, it's my last point, I promise you. It says that, let me just find what it says so I don't, I don't butcher this verse. He says that we know in part and we prophesy in part. Mm. But when the perfect comes, so what's, what's the perfect, guys? The perfect is that day. Mm. The partial will pass away. So he, it says in verse 12, we see the mirror dimly, but then face to face and know in part then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So once again, the Bible says, he that does not love, that does not know God. What's, what's, what's John saying? John is saying the fruit of being a true disciple is that you're always in pursuit of the love of God and being loved by God. And then that, that love will be perfected in you on that day when you see him face to face. So yeah, I'll just end there. I went a bit too deep, but yeah. No, that's really good, babe. And even when you look at that root word um, for perfect, it speaks about maturity, you know, something being brought into full maturity. So it kind of aligns with what you're saying. Well, it does align with what you're saying in terms of like on that day, um, that full maturity, the completeness. Um, so, yeah, that's really, really good. Group, everyone leave a heart in the in the in the chat. Um, uh, group, where are we? Group four, group four, really quickly, really quickly. I don't want to keep you guys any longer. Group four, that was Tambo, Ariel, and Leke and Ore. So, yeah, try to be as quick as possible. Um, so, we had Songs of Solomon 2, verse 4, which says, He brought me to the banqueting house, and his back over me was love. And we kind of just focused on that word banner and how it reminded us almost of like a covering being over us, like a shielding, like a, almost like, not necessarily a flag, but literally like a piece of clothing on top of us. And then I was reminded of um, Jonathan and David. So in 1 Samuel 18, verses three to four, Jonathan made the covenant with David because he loved him as he loved, as he loved himself. And Jonathan removed the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic, his sword, his bow, and his belt. And it kind of reminds you of, like, God is love and covers him, or covers us in his love. Mm -hmm. So it's like, in the same way how Jonathan removed that out of his love for David, God bringing us into that house, bringing us into that banqueting house, covers us in his love. And I think Tambo gave the illustration of almost like a traditional wedding in a way. Sometimes you come in and you see everyone in their different attitudes. It's like, when I think about that, it's like, that's how you kind of, um, you can kind of tell who's from where just by the nature of the clothing and what they're covered in. I think even now when we're covered in God's love, it's a reflection of us being one with the Lord, being part of that family now. And so when he's brought us into the banqueting house, he dresses us up in his love so that we are also now part of the party. We can now dance and fellowship and be part of it as if we were always part of that group. And then obviously that she'll go through Hebrews 12. Um, just summarize Hebrews 12. Don't you don't have to read it out. Okay. So you can summarize it. <clears throat> okay. Um, so for that one, I think it was just showing like another aspect of God's fatherly love because he was talking about his discipline. And I guess also remembering that because God loves us, he also disciplines us as well. But also like Hebrews 12 just encourages us to you know, count it all as joy and everything like that. And I just liked how it compared, like, God to, like, obviously physical fathers and how they discipline us as well. But, like, they discipline us to the best of their abilities because, like, they have a plan for us, like, a vision for how they want us to turn out as their children. The same way God has, like, 
the vision for us. Like he knows how he wants us to be. So he disciplines us so we can become that, like, so we can become like Christ. And I think it's just remembering that I love he has so much for us that he wants to continue to see us grow and yeah, become better. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much for that summary. It's so, so good. And I think to um what that that scripture in um Songs of Solomon 2 4, he brings me before the banqueting table, his banner over me is love. Um, you know, you have to remember in those times to be at on part of the banqueting table, king's banqueting table, you had to be a caliber of person, right? When you think about Mephibosheth. Um, you know, and him dining with King David, you had to be a kind of caliber based on where he was coming from. Really and truly, Mephibosheth was not worthy of being at the table, but based on the king's request and the king's legislation or what he desired for Mephibosheth, he was then made worthy of continually dining at the table. And I, I think it's important for us to recognize, when it says he brings me before the banqueting table, there is the king, right? Our Lord Jesus, the king makes us worthy to be at this banqueting table, right? To be a part of, to commune, to fellowship um, with our Lord, right? It doesn't matter what person you are, we have access to be at that banqueting table. And almost seeing it as though the banner is almost the king's celebration of, of me, you as an individual as well. Like it's a celebration. And I always say, if we should lean into the celebration that God has over us so that we can celebrate ourselves. Amen. Everyone put celebrate in the chat. Lastly, Faye Sarah's group. Let's go. Let's end this thing. Let's, let's go. Um, um oh me is it me or you face go ahead go ahead okay great um so um for me personally I kind of kind of summarized it um I basically just said like how um as well as the um verses but also like the whole session in general has like resonated with me because um I'll say for me personally I'll say um that it kind of makes me think and like um oh sorry it was on again sorry guys um so I'm kind of um thinking like how close I am with God and like where I am in my journey mm -hmm. and the fact that it is a journey for me because um maybe I haven't a hundred percent well not that it's a hundred percent because it is a gradual process but maybe I haven't fully received God's love mm -hmm. if I'm you know still struggling to you know love other people if I'm still struggling to love my enemies despite them doing me wrong and um maybe that that um needs to be done with me just you know getting into the world and just really be getting that revelation of God's love for me knowing that I'm the person that he's forgiven and he's loved which is you know something that I also need to demonstrate by like being close to God mm. um yeah so um a lot of us a lot of us are kind of saying the same thing saying that oh um that God's love is endless and how um no matter how far we move from God like he still loves us regardless so even before the world started even before we committed our first sin like even if we you know made the wrong move like God's love like has stayed consistent and it's never changed mm -hmm. like the same God from like you know Adam and Eve time is still the same God now so nothing about God has changed and that includes his love as well mm -hmm. and um yeah and then um I'll say that um like even if we fall off he's, he's always ready to you know welcome us with open arms again and again and again so yeah yeah, that's so good. Thank you so much, Polly. Anyone else from the group? Love that you shared that. Then we wrap up. Um, yeah, I think just to quickly add something mm -hmm. after Polly shared, like something that we spoke about quite a lot with the renewing of the mind. Mm -hmm. Um, and with everything that Polly said, just sort of like positioning ourselves mm -hmm. to really like believe that truth so like obviously we know that you know God is a father we know that we're loved because we've been taught it from however old but like having an activeness and like not being passive but being very deliberate in aligning ourselves with that truth and affirming ourselves with scripture and 
um, renewing our mind daily because we have a world that's going to feed us so many other quote unquote truths. Um, we have to be very deliberate and very diligent with just ensuring that we we guard our minds that way and and speak hmm. like a scripture to ourselves. Um, so. Amen. Thank you for your sorrow. Really, really powerful points. And like I said, please screenshot um, the other scriptures so that we can all go through it. But we're going to end with this scripture and we're going to pray. It says... Um, from Zephaniah 3 from verse 16 it says in that day it should be it shall be said of Jerusalem do not fear Zion let not your hands be weak the Lord your God is in your midst the mighty one will save he will rejoice over you with gladness he will quiet you with his love he will rejoice over you with singing and that's happening right now and I just want us to just really take a moment first of all to just ask the Lord to heal our hearts um to heal our hearts um, from disappointment, from being let down, from being rejected, abandoned, really having that real conversation with God right now, like, Lord, like, heal me, heal that place, what I've suppressed, um, every feeling, just begin to just release that to the Lord. Yeah, Holy Spirit, right now we just heal our, our hearts lord heal our hearts heal our hearts lord god from every pain every wound every heartbreak every form of rejection every abandonment lord just really pray for that even where our earthly fathers um didn't do well in showing up the way we would have desired where they missed the mark on their end lord where they didn't show commitment or faithfulness or Holy Spirit, heal that area. Yeah. Heal me and release us from any pride that has come as a result of, you know, our own independence and our own way of doing things and our own way of thinking, Lord God. And just really bring us, Lord. Yeah, because your love leads us and produces humility. And we just really ask for that as you heal us, Lord. The Holy Spirit, yeah. Just begin to ask the Lord to give you a revelation of your beloved identity. Yeah, Lord, give me a revelation of beloved identity. Yeah. A revelation of my sonship, that I'm a child. Mm. Holy Spirit, affirm our sonship and pour out your love upon our hearts. Even right now, I just sense that there is a heaviness on some people's hearts, a weight on some people's hearts, like a pain, an ache. And Holy Spirit, I pray even right now, minister to them. I pray, Lord, your, the manifestation of your scripture in Psalm, where it says that you are close to the brokenhearted. May you meet them even tonight. May you bring them into commune with you, God. Jesus. Yeah, meet them. Even right now, God. Father, make this love a reality. And even now as we're closing in prayer, I really sense the Lord saying, um, and I didn't add this in the, in the teaching, I forgot to add it, but I really sense for a lot of you that there is a supernatural experience that you have concerning the love of God. There is that supernatural affirmation. But where I um, taught on our father, like this communal thing, this community thing, there's something to be said about being in fellowship and in community and experiencing the love of God through people through your engagement with people through relationship pure relationship and holy spirit i just want to pray right now god where there is a fear of being rejected a fear or a whisper that 
they do not belong in your house or they do not belong as part of your body whatever lie it may be whatever the enemy has tried to do whether it be through hardship to separate them from fellowship and community the very place Lord God where you express your love Lord whether it be church hurt, experience, God, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will do a work so deep in this season that brings them into community so that they can experience the fullness, the full expression of your love for them through people, through relationship, Daddy. I pray that right now, yeah, Lord, may they experience your comfort Lord God, may your love overwhelm them in the moment of fear that causes them to step away or to step back or not build. But Lord, we experience the fullness of who you are in community. And I pray every single thing that has led them to not be engaged in the very thing, family, the very thing that you express, even Father, Lord God, in, in, in creation. Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll bring them to a place of courage to step into this realm, hallelujah, to step into fellowship with you. Just really pray that. Yeah. I rebuke you, shame. You have no place here. There is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Holy Spirit, give them the courage to forgive themselves of certain things that they have done that they feel removes them far from you, God. Jesus. May we have this relation, this revelation of beloved identity this week, God, even as they dream tonight. Yeah, someone needs to be comforted, Lord, in the room. May you meet them, meet them, speak to them words of comfort, bring the right people into their lives that will serve as your voice and expression. Hallelujah. Shakia Baba City Baba Shakia. Speak that. Yeah, and for some of you, you might have a song in your spirit. I want you to just worship tonight. Just worship. Just let your heart out to the Lord. You don't even need to have the perfect voice. But that worship will bring you into intimacy with him. Yeah, just be free even in this moment. Just worship, just, just really let host his presence, be a host of his presence even right now. We finished the teaching, but I really just really sense that for some of you, God wants, God wants to take you a little bit deeper in the word and a little bit deeper in his presence so that you can really catch this. Because this one is not, not by logic. <laughs> it's a supernatural. His love is supernatural. Yes, yeah, so Holy Spirit, reveal yourself. Yeah, may we live in that overflow. Holy Spirit, as you pour out your love, may you tear down every wall, every wall that we've built that stops people from loving us, stops people from really coming in. Yeah, break down those walls, Lord. Break it down and build the right healthy boundaries, Lord God, that will still allow love, but still keep out what is not of you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. And I want to encourage you to just um, continue. Don't stop because we've, you know, stopped the teaching or whatever. Just continue in that. And I just really sense as well, you know, for those that have spouses and are married to really take a moment tonight with your spouse and just really ask the, the love of God to be poured out upon your marriage so that you have a grace for one another. Hmm. Yeah, Holy Spirit. Yeah, I pray together. Some of you may have to just call someone on here, DM them via Slack and be like, hey, can we pray together? 
you know um but yeah god bless you guys thank you for coming tonight um and i really pray that it blessed you um take care bye